You know, looking back at the game, um, really pleased with, uh, really I go back two weeks after the Stanford game and just kind of our guys' mindset, um, how we practiced, how we paid attention to try to get better. And I think it showed up on Saturday. And um, <clears throat> was just really pleased, really probably starting with our defense, how hard they played, um, how they paid attention to you know, all the things we've been working on from day one. I thought they tackled well. They covered pretty well. You know, we did a good job against Cal's run game, which has been effective. And I think that's one of the reasons that they've been so explosive is because they've had a legitimate run game going. Um, I thought the first play was first drive where, um, you know, Shaq got the fumble, was obviously the key to the game. You know, I think that sparked us probably rattled them a little bit. I thought it was awesome football. When you really look at the tape and you see our guys inside, Danny, Evan Hudson really trying to plug the gaps. They didn't handle the snap clean, but our guys were playing to stop them. They were. And then when Shaq got the ball, you know, he's got a convoy of Buddha, Marcus Peters, Kevin King. Marcus gets in a guy's way, you know, smart blocking just enough to, to screen him. Um, Buddha gets in somebody's way, and then Kevin King could appeal back and block something. Doesn't do that to get a cheap penalty or anything. I just thought it was really good football that kind of sparked us for the rest of the game. I thought on, uh, on offense, I thought uh, run game could be cleaner. Um, I thought Siler was effective and efficient, made progress there. And, uh, and on special teams, Got to clean a couple things up in the kicking game. So that's my two cents. Yeah. Sorry about that. Is there any protocol for overturning the Josh Perkins penalty and the suspension for the Oregon game the first half, or is that yeah, not, not much? Uh, we're, we're, we, we've been in contact with them, um, and so they're looking into some things. But uh, yeah, I mean, you probably know me making a call. I mean, uh, those are hard calls. I mean, the bottom line is, I mean, we're trying, you know, the officials are trying to get them right. Those are really close calls. We're also sensitive about the head shots, trying to take that out of the game. And so those are hard. It's, it's a lot easier when you've got the replay and you can sit there and look at it 30 times after I me. Mean, it's a lot easier there. So. What would you want the, to him to do differently in that situation? Very, very tough. You know, it was, it was really a reaction. You know, I mean, John Ross is changing directions every nanosecond and, you know, a guy kind of comes back and he hits a guy. Um, you know, not, we always talk about strike zone. Strike zones, bottom of the numbers, lower. And so, you know, to not, not put anything in question, lower the, lower the, the strike zone, you know, lower the target zone. So is, is there a chance then that he could play in the first half? Well, I, I don't know because we had a conversation yesterday and uh, they haven't got back uh, to us just yet. And so... No more today sometime. Do you have to ask for a review on that, or is there already a mechanism <laughs> in place by the Pac-12 to constantly kind of look at those things? It's not, it's not a Pac-12 rule. It's a national rule. So anytime anybody gets thrown out, I mean, they're reviewing that for sure to make sure that they see it as you know, a targeting um, call. And so they did look at it. And, you know, again, it's, they look at it pretty quickly, and sometimes the angles aren't what we have and those things. What about Ross on that play in general? Yeah. Rewind a couple times. Yeah, he is. You know, he those. those, It's it's explosive. It's interesting. It's it's a little bit scary. A little bit for a a coach sometimes because what happened at the end of the play um, is a lot of times what happens is that ball will come out. I mean, they're they're running so far. They're all over the place. Ball security is always an issue. We saw that. Uh, The other thing is, is sometimes you can take a big loss. Um, you know, you saw that a little bit on our kickoff that we, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, but when a guy's like, there's some certain things you're going to have to live with to get something good, uh, maybe at the other end. Did you say anything to him after that then? Do you protect the ball? <laughs> is there a way to uh, coach a spontaneous play like that? I mean, do you have a, is there an audible signal that something is happening here that you have to change for the blockers typically? No. Right? 
No, I mean, I think it, you, you just continually talk about strike zone and where we're trying to block guys. And I think our guys get it. I think everybody's making progress in college football. Sometimes when they happen so fast, when they you know, redirect, it's, it's, it's a little bit like a receiver going over the middle. And sometimes those plays happen fast. But I think the DBs, for the most part, have you know, cleaned a lot of those things up. And so we're making progress as a game. Coach, did you see an increased level of maturity in this away game compared to the one in Hawaii? Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's maturity. Um, I guess I guess you could mix some of that in there. I do think that they've worked hard the last. I think they've worked hard every week. I really do. Um, I just hope that you know you're paying attention to the details. I mean, like I say every week, and like I tell our team, we we can work hard and not get any better. I mean, we really can. That that's. That's really the common thing that most, most will do. Most, most people, most college kids, and to come out and work and really pay attention to the minute details, uh, to me, is what separates some people. And I think we, we made some progress there. Coach, I know we ask every week, but a lot of us are just still scratching our heads over just Casey Williams' role. Yeah. Well. Yep, and uh, so are we. And so we're going to, you know, we're going to continue to look at it. We're going to try to move him around a little bit. And... Uh, you know, see if we can get him the ball more. I mean, it's obviously different personnel players, but do you look back at any of your games against Oregon when you were at Boise, when you beat them, to kind of see what, what worked scheme-wise in those games? No, I mean, it, you know, we're, we're talking about an elite program here. I mean, that, that's the one thing, is we're talking about an elite program in the country, not only our, co our conference. And so, to me, you know what Oregon's going to do. So this is all comes back to us. I mean, how, how are we going to play? I mean, if we're not extremely uh, on playing our best football we've played all year, have as much attention to detail as we've had all year, play as hard as we play all year, we're not going to have a chance. And so it comes back to us. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to do with anything in the past. Uh, it comes down to playing good football. Husky fans over what's taking place in this rivalry of the last I know day. how the rivalry was because when I was at Oregon, it was kind of flipped in a lot of ways. And so, um, you know, and everybody's got their – I mean, I, I think it's – I think there's just interesting rivalries in the Pac-12, Pac you know, with, you know, all the Northwest schools in a lot of ways. And certain schools are pointing at the other school and the other school is pointing at this school. And that's kind of how it was way back when. And, you know, when a team starts uh, – winning a lot against a certain team that becomes their rival and maybe not even so much to the other guys you know you gotta you gotta win some to even it out to make somebody a rival um but yeah when somebody wins a lot i know it frustrates a lot of people that 2009 game against oregon in boise what, what do you remember about your defense and why were you guys so effective against their running game yeah uh it's a long time ago uh i just know the kids played hard and you know, two good teams going at it, and we, uh, you know, having to win down the road. But I just, I don't remember the details other than I know guys played really, really hard and effective. Have you been back to Eugene since the, kind of in the last five years since they've had the, all these facility upgrades? I haven't been in them since they're brand new ones in the last probably two years or so. I can't remember the last time, maybe three years ago. It's impressive. And you can see how it can change things. Not only that, I mean, it's, it's not any one thing, like we always say, but that's a big piece of it. And, you know, they got all these really cool things, but at the end of the day, if you don't win, you know, the kids, the kids like winning and what goes with it. And so they've done a great job with that. You were obviously there when they were having some success in the, in the early 2000s, but what, I guess from an outsider view, can you put a pinpoint what has elevated them maybe since you left? I just think they've stuck to the process. I mean, those are the same coaches. I mean, half that staff are the same guys that were there when I were there. They're really good people, first and foremost. They're really good coaches. They got really good support there. They've never said, hey, we're good. You know, we have this building. We're good. We have this stadium. We're good. They're always trying to figure out how to, how to get better. And, and they've just stuck to their – and they've, you know, they've – it's not any, any one thing. It's just – this on top of that, and they stack things, and then they get good players and that are good kids, and uh, you see what happens. Do you get the sense, Pete, that that, that Arizona game was kind of a wake-up call for them, and 
and, and you kind of saw that in, in how they played at UCLA? I think that, uh, you know, I think that, I think Arizona played really good and really hard. And I think we've been saying about the parity in this, this conference. Um, you know, I think Oregon's really, really good. But you never know on any given night. You know, that's it. And I'm sure it did. You know, I'm sure it did kind of say, wow. You know, and sometimes, uh, you know, close wins or hard-fought losses. I mean, it's all how you spend it. Can, it can all help you. I know we've talked about the parity. I looked, and I think it, the Pac-12 is like 4-14 four and 14 right now in home games. I have no... Uh, no rhyme or reason or no answer on that thing. I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever seen anything that, that's it's just kind of beggar's belief, really? In the, in the There's day. a lot of things kind of in this season that I have a hard time figuring out and answering, and that would be one of them right now. I think it, you know, I think it'll be interesting to look at at the end of the season, see if that still, you know, plays out or if it evens out, if it's weird scheduling or, you know, those matchups. You know, some teams play better against others depending on the matchup and the style. And so maybe there's a weird correlation there. I don't really know. Marcus Mariota, I know you guys play Vernon Adams and struggled with him. Is there anything that you guys learned with, from Vernon Adams that might help you with Marcus? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we learned any front thing that carry over there. I mean, he's he's might be the best player in college football. And so that's, that's a problem right there. He's going to make plays. And you just got to keep reloading and not get down and not back down and keep playing hard. I mean, that that I do know because they're going to make plays. They're really good players. and Like I say, maybe the best quarterback in the country. And uh, so it's just about reloading and next play and and uh, keep fighting uh, like we did on that first drive when it looked like they were going in and we made a play. I mean, it's that mentality. Like, regarding Case, you didn't have any targets against Cal. Do you feel like the offense needs to maybe design some things specifically for him? Seems like you have those kind of things for Ross, for Mickens, but maybe. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there there might be some of that, and that's what that's what I was kind of alluding to earlier. Yeah, we gotta maybe move them around a little bit more and dial a few things up. Um, and so a lot of this, you know, when you when you don't huddle up a lot, it's hard to get guys in the position where you think that the ball is going to go, and then the coverage and the read dictates it. And you know, a little bit of his coverage says no, and if a guy doesn't win on his release. That says no, and you know there's not any one answer. But we got to, we're still looking at it, trying to figure that out. Like Ben Reba tried to go early against Cal, he came out. He it? hurt his ankle, third play. Different. Completely that. different. You know, if he didn't have any bad luck, he'd have zero luck right now because that's always been happening. So hopefully we'll get him uh, going eventually, and all that uh, all that luck is starts to turn his way a little bit. What did Arizona do that? UCLA didn't this past week? Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, a l little bit different style, you know, and like I said, I mean, um, I think ex I think uh, Arizona kind of does what they do. I mean, they just executed their, their system. It wasn't anything overly complicated. It really wasn't, but really impressed in terms of how hard they played and how well they executed. That's what it always comes down to. I mean, that's the thing that kind of jumped out to me and, um, you know, was really impressed with how those guys played Oregon. Oregon's always had a great pace that wears people down. They take advantage in the second half. What did you do in Boise to counter that business of uh, the fatigue on the part of the opponent defense? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think what Oregon does is they just keep running their stuff, and they got good players, and they don't get away from it. And it might not have worked the first time or the second time, then all of a sudden there's that crease. And they got really, I mean, their whole thing is they get really good, fast athletes and they get them in space. And they're not going to get away from what they do. And so they keep running it and you might hit them, you might hit them, and then all of a sudden they get a crease and now they got it going and get a little momentum. And they got an excellent passer that can run. And then if you actually cover them, he's going to run around and he can find guys. Or if he can, he can outrun most of the defense. It's a hard combination to stop. Is there anything about what Helfrich does right now where you put on the film and go, okay, that's distinctly him compared to maybe what Chip Kelly was doing or, or Mike Villotti? Yeah, I mean, it's different. You know, it, it, it gets tweaked. I, it's hard to say. I mean, I think, I think all coaches are continually evolving and trying to play to your strengths and stay away from you, depending on the, you know, what your guys can do. Um, but, you know, it's a really good system that they've had there for a while, so you're not going to get too far away from it. So it's hard to say, you know, it, it's all – you know, it's all uh, 
you know, Mark and those guys now. I mean, Chip's been gone for a while now, so everything they're doing, they've had a decision to make. Do we keep doing this or not? So, then, you know, they got a lot, he's got a lot of experience in that style and that offense. Along the same lines, uh, see any differences in that defense with the new coordinator or any <clears throat> wrinkles that jump out well, at you? Well, same, same thing again. I mean, uh, you know, I, I haven't studied Oregon's um, those guys a whole bunch last year, the year you know the year before, and so. But old Don Pelham's been there a long time with Nick, and I mean those guys would think a lot alike, and you know all those things, and so sure he's going to put his spin on it and emphasize the blitzes and the coverages that he likes a little more. But overall, I mean the structure and the base of the defense is is the same as how it was. What's your relationship like with coverage? You know, good relationship. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. And, uh, you know, like most football coaches, don't have really any contact with him during the season. Um, we don't have any contact with anyone other than our team and our our wives. And uh, But he's, uh, yeah, he's a great guy. He really is, really smart. And Do you get the sense that your players are maybe more fired up and motivated for this game and they have for yeah, hard for me to know. That's hard for me to know. I don't know. I mean, I I, I know about the Oregon, you know, Washington stuff, but I I don't think this, like I said, that that's not my focus of like getting them fired. I mean, th this to me needs to be about us. We got a really good team, you know, one of the better teams in the, if not one of the best teams in the country for sure. And so, you know, what are we going to do? We know what, like I said, when I started, this, we know what they're going to do. We know how hard and how good they're going to play. What can we do? And so I always want this to be back on us. Our focus is on us. And you're doing the best you can do. Do you enjoy rivalries? I mean, or does that kind of go along with the whole it's a distraction type of thing and that's not what you want them focusing on? Well, you know, I think this game needs to play, be played with emotion. And uh, if we're ever lacking that, that's not good. But on the flip side, too, if you can have, there's a balance there. If you've got too much of it, you're not going to play your, your best either. So we need to have good emotion, the correct emotion. Um, but I think that's what makes college football so fun is, uh, you know, truly the different rivalries around in the conferences and everybody knowing each other and the fans and all that. I mean, that's, that's the pageantry. And that's, you know, I think that's one of the things that really kind of separates maybe pro ball and college ball. I know there's rivalries in the NFL as well, but you seem to feel it a little bit. Maybe it's just because of the world we're in. I don't know. Georgia State game, your uh, young corners seem to be playing quite a bit off. And you talked about how they needed to play tighter. It looks like they've done that, and they're playing a lot better. Can you talk about your young defensive backs? Yeah, I think I think they're they're making strides every every game. You know, we get challenged a little bit differently every every week. I think Jimmy Lake does a really good job with those guys. You know, Buda Baker's as focused as you know, any player we have, let alone a young guy. I think Sidney Jones is the same way. And we have a couple other young guys in there that are getting reps and doing some things in the secondary. And I think they are improving rapidly, which we need them to do. We kind of said way back when, if they're focused and really hungry, they will improve a lot. You know, it's harder for the older guys to improve a lot. The young guys are so green and, and will grow fast. But we need them too, and they have been doing that. And um, it needs to continue. I mean, we're only halfway through this this season right now and so if we can keep playing a little bit better each you know each week head in the right direction after reviewing film what did miles do uh, against cal that he hadn't done in the yeah. season? i think uh i think he got the ball out on time uh you know i think he did a better job in the pocket not getting uh you know feeling the rush a little bit better i thought he threw the ball really accurately a couple times um Real accurate, um, and uh, you know he's just more efficient. You know, I just think he took what they gave him, he saw things quicker, threw the ball more accurate. Kind of comes down to those three things I always talk about, and when that when he's efficient and all those things, you're usually going to come back to that. When you talk about the process, Pete, and you talk about getting better each week, did, does Saturday's result does that give you any indication that maybe you're a you're right on track or even ahead of schedule from yeah, what you I don't, I, I, You know how these things go. A lot of times it's two steps forward, one step back. So, I mean, we just got to take one week at a time. You just don't know. Um, you know, sometimes the opponent has something to do with it in terms of, um, you know, injuries and those type of things. I mean, we got a really, really good opponent uh, this week that'll 
take our best across our three phases to be able to play with these guys. And uh, so we'll really see if we have been climbing. Good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.